Greetings from Potash Ridge, Alabama. It is so good to be coming to you tonight, live from this beautiful part of Alabama. Uh, I tell you, the weather, it got beautiful today. I mean, it was nice and gorgeous. It wasn't too hot and it wasn't too cold. It was just right. And I, it felt good. The sun was shining. The birds were singing and to go down the road and see the trees blooming. I, it is springtime. It's definitely coming upon us very quick. Yeah, I know we still got a few more weeks of winter yet, officially on the map. But it's, spring is coming, and I mean, we already see it. Uh, I think that we've noticed some birds getting ready to build some, another nest up in our carport. I, I think they trust us and everything. So. <laughs> That's always a good sign, I guess. So I'm going to start a little Bible study tonight and uh, the Book of James. I, I've always loved the Book of James. It's a, a small book, five chapters long, it, but it has so much meat in it, if you could get in there. It's a book that talks about practical living. It's a book that gives us a, a guide to practical Christianity, if you will. And, and the James here in this, that wrote this book was not James the Apostle, the brother of, uh, of John. The James that wrote this book was actually James the half-brother of Jesus. And you know, Jesus had four brothers after he was born. Uh, contrary to what some religions teach, Mary and Joseph did consummate their marriage after Jesus was born. And he had four brothers and some sisters. The Bible does not tell us how many sisters he had. But he did have uh, uh, siblings and everything, so he, he did know what it was like to have siblings and all of this growing up. But James starts out interesting here. He's the half-brother of Jesus. Many of his brothers did not believe in him during the whole time that his ministry was going on. The scripture tells us that in John, that many of them did not believe in him. It was only after the resurrection that many of them come to Christ and to accept him as the Messiah and as the Lord and Savior. And it's interesting here, James starts out and he says, says James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's just interesting. He doesn't get all big right there and say, well, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Jesus' half-brother here. I got something to tell you, no, no, since I grew up with Jesus and then he got, no, he didn't grow up with any kind of pride. But James was saying, he wouldn't even recognize himself in this letter as a half-brother. As a matter of fact, in the books of, uh, nearly all the books of Paul, and in the books of John and Peter and Jude, it seems to always read when they're given their name, they say, a servant of God, a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul said several times, the bond servant of Jesus. You see, in John chapter 14, or 13, John chapter 13, Jesus even told the disciples, he said, no longer do I call you servants, your friends. Yet they, in their letters, they would not even do that. They said, a servant. Oh, that we could get ministers today, that we get that servant talk back, to realize that we're not lifted above anyone else just because of our relationship with God, if anybody had any bragging rights, so to speak, James he had. I mean, after all, he was the half-brother, and many tend to believe that after Jesus rose and 
went back, some tend to believe that he might even be the leader of the church for a while there, but yet he never boasted of his relationship with Jesus. He referred to him as Lord, Master. That's something else I think the church today needs to get back to, is viewing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. John, uh, James tells who he writes this letter to, he said to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. He tells them right there, no greetings to all of But then in verse 2, he jumps right into the heart of his letter. And it's, it's interesting the way he begins this letter. And he says, My brethren, count it all joy. When ye fall into divers temptations, count it all joy. We don't want to do that today, do we? When things come our way, when trials, and the, the, the same word for temptation here can also be on top of the trials. When trials come our way and things begin to happen and it seems like things are falling apart, Oh, we want to grumble and gripe. We want to go to Facebook and put it out on Facebook. We want to go to church and say, Oh, pray for me. Uh, the devil's been after me all this week. We want to grumble about it. We want to tell everybody about it. But James said, Count it all joy when you fall into double temptation or trial. Why? Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Oh, that's that people. I tell you, sometimes you think you have patience, then things happen and find out you really don't have as much patience as you thought you did. Trials come to make our patience grow. You know, look at these muscle builders and bodybuilders and stuff. They didn't just, they weren't just born that way. They had to exercise. They had to get their bodies in shape and, and all of this to make those muscles grow. But the same thing with our patience. For our patience to get better. And I, uh, and, and I hear people say, oh, pray for me, don't get patience. Well, that's the way patience comes. It comes by trials, it comes by tribulations, it comes as it comes to test us and see how we will respond to the things that are going on. Because when we will give an account for how we act and how we respond on that day that we stand before God, but tribulations work your patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Paul talked about being, uh, in all situations, being content. In the book of Philippians, chapter. Four, uh, chapter 4, he talked about the fact that what he was state we were in to be content, that we could do all things from Christ who strengthens us. Oh, my friend, there is something about learning to be patient. And when we get to that point that we are truly are patient with God, uh, patient waiting on God, patient with men, patient with women, Patient with everybody else, patient with our family, patient with our spouse, patient with our children. We get to that place that we can learn to be truly patient. That we'll be perfect. And, and, and entire. We'll only nothing. We'll be complete. 
For it should have I was perfect except Jesus, yet Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, near the end of chapter 5, Jesus said, Be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. We strive for perfection. And in that we come to know patience, that we can wait on God and know that He is leading us and know that He is guiding us every step of the way in whatever that we would have to do in all things. Let's go on a little bit further here. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a man, or it's like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. If they would have been out to the beach, I saw my stuff you have. I've been on a boat. When that wind begins to blow when those waves go back and forth. I'm out on the beach. The waves are coming in and going out, coming in and going out. They're not consistently going one way. It's like they can't make up their mind which way they want to do or which way they want to go. James said a post, uh, did a person who, who just does not ask, who asks in faith, who does not ask in faith for his lot that they're not consistent with anything. They're always wavering back and forth. Well, maybe God heard me. Maybe God didn't hear me. Maybe God doing it. Maybe he's not doing it. No, I, oh, I, that pain's gone. I'm healed. Whoops, that pain is back. I'm not healed. I mean, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'm not in the name it, claim it. <clears throat> or anything like that. But I do believe we need to learn to be consistent uh, in what we're saying uh, and how we're saying it. Uh, not always wavering. God, oh, God's taking care of us, uh, but whenever things is going bad, God's not taking care of us. Friends, we're not speaking in faith there. We've got to get back uh, to what we speak in true faith. Verse 7, For let not that man who's always wavering back and forth. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. God is looking for men and women who are consistent. He's looking for men and women who are asking in genuine faith what he is doing. First state a very interesting verse. For uh, James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A person, a man or a woman who is not consistent in what to say, who's talking out of both sides of their mouth, if you will, I, I believe that's the term that many use today, who can't never be you never know what they might be thinking or saying. A double-minded man or woman, Paul uh, James said, is unstable in all their ways. <clears throat> They're not consistent. And God is looking for men and women that are consistent in their talk that are consistent in their actions, that are persistent in the same thing, who are going it constantly. You know, it's not all, it's not all about uh, a, person, uh, a person who is wavering. Many times they face what they believe about God on how they feel. Instead, and on their circumstances, Instead of just speaking faith and speaking the truth. Verse 9, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. 
but the rich in the in, in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no so is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof fadeth, and the grass of the uh, uh, of the fashion of the grace of the fashion of your appearance. So also shall the rich man fade away in his way. Blessed is the man that endures temptation or blessed or trials. Like I said, the same Greek word. He's used for both. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life which the Lord has promised them that love him. All of that's tied in together. James is saying, be consistent. Don't get caught up in your riches because if you're rich because that will pass away like the grass. Don't get caught up if you're poor and begin to try to roll that. But let your faith be in God. And when trials come, then behold on to God. Blessed is the man that endures temptations or endures trials. At the time it seems like that's what we're going through today all around us. It seems like things are happening we don't understand and we're saying, why God, why? I just read a little bit earlier of a minister that just said I'm just quitting the ministry, I'm leaving. Friend, that's not the thing we need to do. We need to hold on to God. He is still in control. Don't be weary in, in, well, in well doing, for we will reap. Listen to me, ministers. We will reap in due season if we faint not. Hold on to that call that God has given you, and don't let the circumstances of life make you go back and forth. Christian, hold on to that dream, to that promise that God has given you. And don't go, don't let the circumstances sway you one way or the other. Don't let doubt sway you one way or the other. Don't let what people say sway you one way or the other. But hold on with everything you have and dare to believe God for the impossible. Hold on just a bit. Let me get my rudder. We have got to get. I'm going to give you two stories. First of all, the first story I heard, I read, what well, I heard, of a preacher. He was in the church service. His baby daughter was in the nursery. And the nursery attendants brought to his daughter to him. She had managed somehow to cut off to the, the tips of two of her fingers. And they had brought them wrapped in a paper towel. The preacher prayed for the pain stopped. But after the service, the, uh, well, you know, the dad went and checked and everything, made sure the bleeding was stopped. And after the service, they took her to the emergency room. The doctor said, there's nothing we can do. I can make two plastic finger tips, but we'll have to, you know, as she grows, replace them. The man said, no, God's going to heal her. God is going to replace those finger tips. So the doctor threw those two finger tips that they brought back in the trash, wrapped the baby's hand up, fingers up the best they could. General Harms said, come back in two weeks. That preacher went home and they constantly listened to the Word of God. They constantly were in the Word, they were reading the Word, they were listening. He was constantly going every time the church doors was open to hear the Scriptures, to hear the Bible. Because he said that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, Romans chapter 10 verse 17. 
And he said that any time anybody come to his house, even family, if they ain't got to go, oh, you poor pain, I don't know how to go. He would show them the door. He said, going to have to leave. Right now, just go. Just get. He wasn't trying to be ugly, but he was trying to hold faith because he was believing God for the impossible. Well, two weeks later, two weeks later, he went back to the doctor. The stepmother and daddy was believing. They had been believing. The doctor opened, uh, unwrapped the fingers and said, Oh my, what happened? That child, the two fingertips, it grew back. Oh, well, God had replaced them. Not so much grew back. And that doctor, who was a Jew, I believe, who really didn't believe in miracles, looked and he said, I, I don't understand. That person said, let me tell you what happened. My God and yeah, my Lord healed that baby. My baby. See, we got to believe. There's another story told of a young lady that had a goat, a goat, 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 goat. goat. And her neck, and she believed God had healed her, but for some reason the fact that it was in was still there. She forgo every service. She was praising God, I thank God healed me. I thank God touched me. The thing is gone. That thing just raised my tail. She had done this for about a year. In one service she died and her family was in there. They got so embarrassed. They took her home and said, young lady, you need to quit doing this. You're embarrassing us. You're embarrassing yourself. You're making a mockery out of God. They said, you need to go upstairs and look and see that that thing is still there. She went upstairs and she, lit, and she said, I, she said that she didn't even look in the mirror. She went and she got by bed. She said, God, I believe you healed me. I don't need to look and see if something's still there or not. I don't know why the patch of skin is still there. I know that you have healed me, and I believe it, and I receive it. She got up, got in bed, and went to sleep. Next day, she got up and went to the bathroom to do her duty to let out a scream. Finally come on in there. That bag was gone. It was completely smooth skin. And the whole thing. That thing, there was no evidence of it whatsoever. She kept on believing God, despite what others were saying, despite what others were doing. Friend, we have got to quit being double-minded. It is time that you and I, as Christians, we either believe God or we don't believe God. Our faith is about to be put to a test like it's never been put to before. And when it's time, all of a hundred kayete asando, it is time for the every child of God to begin to say, I'm going to trust in God and Him alone. I'm going to take Him in His word and believe that He meant what He said and said what He meant. When it's time we get a faith like that uh, one more time if we want to see God move and we want to see a revival here in these last days. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for the word that there is nothing impossible for you. Oh, Father, such our hearts tonight Father, help us to not be double-minded in our words, in our actions. Father, help us to be consistent as we talk in faith. Father, not to talk in faith according to what our circumstances are, but to have true faith in you. To have our faith, to have our focus Fenced on you, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, and knowing that we can trust you completely. 
And Father, I lift these up tonight to the watch and do us. I it will see it would it be live or those that will be soon seared. And Father, I ask you to reach into the wombs of what is all in the touch. Father, begin to meet needs right now. Father, begin to move into their lives right now. Father, I come against every demonic spirit. Father, I, can, I, I command the devil to take the blinders off of eyes of those that are watching this, that they would see the truth of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would see the truth of what their actions, the pain that their actions are causing. Father, that they would heal the truth Father, I command the devil to loose them in Jesus' name. Father, I come against all that would come against you. Now, Father, I ask the Lord to reach forth your hand. Father, to heal, deliver, minister by your power. God, let healing begin to flow even throughout everyone that watches this video. Father, let healing begin to flow even now. And God, we know that there is nothing, nothing too difficult for you, nothing too hard for you. Father, we put our faith in you, knowing that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for what you're doing now. Father, I believe in the God is of lives right now being saved. Now, Father, that you are moving the mountains right now. Father, I don't pray for patience, per se. Yet at the same time, you did say, Father, we have not because we ask not. Father, help us to endure the trials that come our way. To learn the lesson you're trying to teach us. To grow stronger in faith toward you. And we'll give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. It is my prayer. That God will richly bless you. Strengthen you. Uplift you. And amen. I and to God, it is my it is our prayer. And if we can ever agree with you in prayer, concerning anything, feel free to send us a message. Please feel free to sell this. Hit the sell button down there. Sell it with people that may need it. And, and join us next week as, uh, as we get into the world. It's time that we. It's really past time. You know, this pandemic has closed up many churches. But there's no reason why we can't get into the world and begin to grow in Christ and begin to grow in Him and mature in Him. May God bless you with our prayer tonight. God bless And be sure and remember, set the clocks forward, spring forward, don't be late for thoughts tomorrow if you're having thoughts. Go to your thoughts, expecting God to move. Your pastor, I hope, has been preparing for a long all week for and listening before God when he wants to, you to heal. So go respect. God bless.